Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and to one of my by far favorite videos to make and as I've noticed yours to watch. If you're new here, welcome, I'm Anna. Make yourself at home on our channel and feel free to explore. For those of you who don't know, I'm making these videos from time to time where you have the opportunity to improve your listening and speaking skills with me. With me, because I guide you through this process. We take a scene or a couple of scenes from a movie and we analyze the speech in the scene. It helps to improve your listening skills by understanding how native speakers speak in reality, let's put it like this. It also helps you improve your speaking skills and pronunciation if you practice those words and phrases from those scenes or even whole scenes with me. For this video, I took a scene from the movie It Takes Two, one of my favorite childhood movies. Do you see what I see? I don't know what you see, but what I see is me. I see me too. We're gonna make a deep analysis of this scene, so let's watch it. That's right, it's the home run queen herself, the belter from the shelter, Miss Amanda, Amanda Lemon! What? I'm gonna kill you. Didn't I tell you not to play ball in that dress? Oh, come on, Diane. I ain't gonna hurt it. It's time for your interview. Now drop the bat. Let's go. Just let me smash this ball downtown, okay? All right, you got 10 seconds. Otherwise, the game is gonna be called on account of bloodshed. Okay. They speak with a New York accent in this movie. However, Amanda, the little girl, speaks with an over-exaggerated New York accent. As kids, they think that it's cool to speak like this, super casually using lots of contractions and slang. But the woman, Diane, speaks casually as well. I'm gonna be looking at the screen for this analysis because I'm gonna be re-listening to what they're saying and looking at those sentences. This way it's gonna be easier for me to analyze it. Amanda, Amanda Lemon! Okay, Amanda Lemon. The name Amanda, the first and the last A are the schwas, and the middle one is a short A sound, A. Amanda. And her last name is Lemon, and it's pronounced just as a fruit, Lemon, where the O is pronounced as a schwa, Lemon, not Lemon. And she's yelling. What? I'm gonna... What? It's a question, so her pitch goes up. She pronounces it with a true T at the end, and the A is pronounced as the schwa here. What? What? I'm gonna kill you! Didn't I tell you not to play ball in that dress? I'm gonna kill you. Okay, I'm Anna. I'm Anna. It's an informal contraction for I'm going to, which can be also pronounced as I'm gonna. I'm Anna. It's said quickly and it's unstressed. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kill you. Then we have two words, kill you, which are stressed, both of them. And you is also a bit stretched. I'm gonna kill you. Let's listen to it again. I'm gonna kill you. Didn't I tell you not to play ball? I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Didn't I tell you not to play ball in that dress? Didn't I tell you not to play ball in that dress? Again, it's a question, so her voice is going up in pitch at the end of it. The stressed words are didn't, tell, not in play, are stressed, but less than other stress words. Ball is definitely stressed, and dress. In the word didn't, the T is dropped, and N links right into the I, and it sounds like didn't I is one word, didn't I? Then we have tell you, you is pronounced fast, you, and the L from tell links to the you, tell you, tell you. Then we have not to play. So let's take a look at not to. She doesn't say, and it's usually not said as two separate words, not to. We connect those words, we link them together, and when we have one word that ends in a T and another one that begins with a T, we pronounce only one T, and that's what she does. So in the word not, it's a stop T, and in the word to, we release it. 
and the word to she pronounces with a schwa, t. Now it's important here. We don't drop the t completely. If we did, it would sound like nata. Hear the difference? Not t and nata. Then we have ball in a dress. So the word ball is stressed and it's pronounced with an aw sound that requires a bit of a stretch by itself. You can't really and you shouldn't speed through words with the sound. The L from ball links to the I from in. Ball in. It's like this L is now part of the word in. Lin. Ball in. And then we connect N from in to the next word that. And here it's interesting because she drops the TH and by connecting those words together we get in at. In at dress, in at without the th. And the t in this in at is stopped. In at, in at dress. Let's listen to it again. What? I'm gonna kill you. Didn't I tell you not to play ball in that dress? Didn't I tell you not to play ball in that dress? Didn't I tell you not to play ball in that dress? Oh, come on, Diane. I ain't gonna hurt it. Oh, come on, Diane. I ain't gonna hurt it. Here, everything's linked together. She doesn't take any breaks. Oh, come on, Diana, I ain't gonna hurt it. And she sounds very annoyed, and therefore, it sounds pretty flat. Nonetheless, there are stressed syllables like k and cum, de and Diane, and ain't and ain't, and her and hurt. Oh, come on, Diana, I ain't gonna hurt it. The word cum. It's pronounced with a schwa, come, and links to on, come on, come on, oh, come on, oh, come on, Diane. Then she connects on to Diane. So we go into position for the end with the tongue, mm, but we don't release it. Instead, we go straight into the D, and come on, Diane. So stopped and released D. She doesn't say, oh, come on, Diane. She says, come on, Diane. Then the and from Diane links to the I and the I to the ain't. Diane I ain't. Diane I ain't. Ain't is a contraction for am not, is not, are not, has not, have not. Diane I ain't. She drops the T in ain't and links the nasal N right into the gonna, which is a contraction for going to. Ain't gonna. Ain't gonna. Then she links na from gonna to heard, na heard it. Heard is pronounced with a flap T because it links to the next word, it, uh, which begins with a vowel sound, I. And when a T comes between two vowel sounds, it's pronounced as a flap T in the American accent. In the word heard, R is not a consonant sound. It's an R-controlled er vowel sound. And it is pronounced with a stop T. So let's listen to it again. Oh, come on, Diane, I ain't gonna hurt it. I ain't gonna hurt it. It's time for your interview, now drop the bat, let's go! Again, everything's linked together, no breaks. It's time, nothing is dropped here. Then again, we link two consonants together, like in this case, time for. We go to the M sound and then straight into the F. So we don't release the M, but release the F. We don't say time for, we say time for, time for. Then for your. So she drops the R in for and links the F plus schwa, f, f, not for, f, to your. And it sounds like for your, for your. The R from your links to the I in the interview. In such words as an interview, native speakers usually drop the T that comes after an N. Uh, but she also dropped the R. So it sounds like interview. It's time for your interview. Now drop the bat. Let's go. For your interview. It's time for your interview. It's time for your interview. Now drop the bat, let's go. So here I'm just gonna point out how she links the P to the TH sound and the TH to the B. So again, she doesn't release the P. She doesn't say drop the. She says drop the. 
So she goes into position for the P, stops there and releases the TH. Drop the. Then we have the TH plus schwa, the. And the word bat, which is pronounced with a short A sound, a, bat. And of course, the T is stopped here. Drop the bat. The rest is pretty clear. Uh, the most stressed words are now, bat, and go. Now drop the bat, let's go. Just let me smash this ball down too, okay? Okay. Just let me smash this ball downtown, okay? So again, Amanda speaks with pretty flat intonation. So in the word just, the T is dropped and is pronounced with a schwa, just. And let me becomes lemmy, the T is dropped here. And then smash this ball downtown. Everything's linked together, but nothing's dropped or contracted and it's said pretty understandably. Then she takes a little pause and then asks K, so she drops the O. K? All right, you got 10 seconds. Otherwise, the game is going to be called on account of bloodshed. So, all right, you got 10 seconds. Otherwise, the game is going to be called on account of bloodshed. So, all right, she says O oh, instead of all, and then write. All right. You got 10 seconds. So grammatically correct would be to say you have got, you've got 10 seconds. But in formal speech, have is left out and it's contracted to just got, you got. So she says you got 10 seconds. In the word seconds, the O is pronounced as a schwa and the D is slightly touched, seconds. Then she links got to 10 and the T in the word got is a stop T and only one T is pronounced in the word 10. Got 10. All right, you got 10 seconds. Otherwise, the game is going to be called on account of bloodshed. Otherwise, the game is going to be called on account of bloodshed. So in the word otherwise, she drops the R and it sounds like otherwise. The S links to the TH and the TH is not dropped but slightly touched. Otherwise the, otherwise the, z the, z the. The tongue comes in position for the TH between the teeth, but you don't put it there. It stays behind the teeth and just slightly touches them. It gives the tongue the opportunity to transition between the sounds quickly. And then game is fully pronounced. So otherwise the game, otherwise the game is going to be called an account of bloodshed. So the game's going to be called is, is clear and fully pronounced here. The game is gonna be called. Then gonna, which is a contraction for going to, as we already know. Then be and then called, which is very stressed. The game's going to be called. And then on account of bloodshed, where she links N in the on to the A in the account, drops the T in the account links the N to the of, which is contracted to just ah, and all this sounds as unaccounta, unaccounta, unaccounta bloodshed. And then she adds bloodshed, which she pronounces very clearly and stresses it going higher in pitch. Unaccounta bloodshed. Now let's listen to the full scene again. Amanda Lemon! What? I'm gonna kill you! Didn't I tell you not to play ball in that dress? Oh, come on, Diane. I ain't gonna hurt it. It's time for your interview. Now drop the bat. Let's go. Just let me smash this ball down too, okay? All right, you got 10 seconds. Otherwise, the game is gonna be called on account of bloodshed. To practice your speaking with such scenes, I recommend to always use subtitles so that you know exactly what you're saying and so that those words are the right words. I also recommend starting very slowly. I noticed two big mistakes that people make when they imitate. They don't use subtitles relying just on their listening skills and oftentimes they repeat not what is being said, thereby practicing wrong words and grammar. And then additionally, when they try to match the speed of speech without analyzing that speech, they mispronounce words. 
So first, make sure that you know exactly what you're saying and don't hurry. Now, let me illustrate and I invite you to practice with me now that we've analyzed the scene. I'm starting slowly. It's like I've slowed down the speed of the video itself. In this slow pace, I try to imitate the intonation and I can really feel those words and sounds in my mouth. And then I speed up. I do such an exercise until I can match the original. It may take some time, but that's why it's called practicing. So let's take as an example, Oh, come on, Diane, I ain't gonna hurt it. Oh, come on, Diane, I ain't gonna hurt it. Oh, come on, Diane, I ain't gonna hurt it. Oh, come on, Diane, I ain't gonna hurt it. Oh, come on, Diane, I ain't gonna hurt it. Now let's talk about their informal way of speaking here. Okay, just don't talk so good. Use lousy English like, ain't you never gonna wanna, don't you have to go to the bathroom? That sort of thing. She calls it lousy English. I wouldn't call it lousy, but just super informal. People can use it with their friends or to be funny, but of course we shouldn't use it at our workplace. However, overusing it might be perceived as sloppy. Especially the word ain't. People who use it are considered as uneducated, but there's a time and a place for everything. You know, you have to know your audience. Nonetheless, at large, you should know what those words mean. So guys, that was the analysis. I hope you liked it and learned something. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you gave this video a like. And I'll see you in the next one.